Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jan Leary, and I want to welcome you to the Truth Zone. We have a really exciting guest this time. It's Pastor Carl Cooper. He's actually pastored in Queens, New York City. He has also been an evangelist out in Tucson, Arizona. And now he's headed back again to Queens, New York City. Very amazing, amazing walk with God. But Pastor, I'd like to ask you, what would you say triggered all this? Like, give us a little bit of your background testimony. Well, my testimony is, uh, personally at least, uh, I, I was uh, back in the 1979, I, uh, for, I found myself at a very young age. I was born in 1965, so at that point I was 13 years old, and probably for the last uh, year and a half I was basically just living a life of disaster. I, right after seventh grade, I I was um, holding a straight-A report card in my hand, and I, I tried marijuana for the first time and continued for the next year and a half trying it basically every day. And so that became my life. And um, I was, at that point, I was not looking for God. I was found myself in September of 1979 uh, doing eighth grade all over again and made up my mind just uh, for no other reason. I just didn't care anymore. I, I was going to either drop out or they're going to kick me out, whatever came first. It didn't matter. And I uh, was invited to church uh, by my brother who had some mutual friends at uh, a place called the Door Christian Fellowship in Tucson, Arizona, where, where I was born and raised. And I was not looking for God whatsoever, but uh, I, though I've been to church many times growing up, I was I was not uh, I was not looking for God whatsoever. I, it meant very little to me outside of religion. Uh, a lot of people do go to church, which is not a bad thing, but to me, it, it was that's all it was. I was not serious about God whatsoever, but I. Uh, but I was uh, I was presented the gospel, and more than just being presented the gospel, I was uh, I was uh, I felt perhaps for the first time a genuine need to be right with God, and 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 along with that a desire as well. And so I did not give my life to Jesus that morning. I left the same, and probably about. I, I believe it was nine days later, I was invited back to church. They were showing a movie, and I knew I knew uh, that um, uh, God was uh, getting a hold of my life, and I knew that uh, there's things that I had to do personally uh, to be right with God. I, 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 was, I really did feel uh, convicted about my own sin, and so that night uh, before, the, uh, before the service was over, I, I gave my life to Jesus, and I, um, I said what they call a sinner's prayer, and that's uh, that's more than just a uh, just a, um, a spelled out prayer. It was it was a prayer from the heart that I realized I was a sinner, and there's nothing that was going to change that unless I was uh, serious with God and honest with God. And I asked God to forgive me of my sins, come inside my heart. And uh, at a very young, I was a month away from being 14, and, and God literally at a very critical time in my life rescued, rescued me spiritually, and, and he changed my life, and uh, I meant it. I, I gave my life to Jesus, uh, and uh, he changed me uh, in ways that only he could. 
He um, delivered me from uh, that lifestyle that I, I, I gave myself to. And more than just, well, I don't do this or I don't do that, he gave me something better. And, and he, he gave me the life that I was looking for in uh, so many things. And, 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 I, and uh, I can look back 39 years later. That's the best decision I ever made. Uh, God put my life back together. Uh, God uh, gave me a purpose. Uh, God gave me uh, fulfillment on the inside that I wasn't going to find anywhere else. Uh, uh, Ten years later, I I got married uh, to my wife Norma, and and, and that was um, uh, that was a wonderful time for me. And I've been married ever since for the last twenty eight years. And um, like I said, God gives you a purpose. Everybody's got a purpose in life. And the best purpose uh, to fulfill in life is a purpose that God gives you. And so uh, I did become a pastor. I went to, um, 1998, I went to California and we pastored there for a while. And we also went to Atlanta, Georgia, back in the early 2000s. And so, uh, so uh, after that, uh, I did become an evangelist uh, in uh, Tucson for about uh, six years, I believe. And while I was uh, while I was uh, there, I um, God was just stirring my heart for some different things, and it, and it led to uh, an opportunity to go to Queens. So, Pastor Cooper, I wanted to ask you, how um, did your parents take this? I mean, you were really a minor at the time, only 14 years old. So I just wondered, how did your parents accept your salvation? Well, um, I was raised uh, with very good parents, but it's a different story. Uh, my father uh, died when I was, uh, passed away when I was three. So uh, truthfully, I did not know him. Uh, from everything that I do know, he's a very good man. And so... Uh, so he did die in 1969, and I was, um, and from that point, my mom uh, became a widow, and she remained so uh, for that time on. And so um, I did have a brother and sister, older brother and sister, and and sadly, um, she watched. Uh, you know, as soon as my father died, she. She uh, went to nursing school. She uh, recreated herself in that as far as a career goes. And my sister made some uh, made her decisions, and my brother uh, basically followed uh, the path before me uh, that I was following. And when I fell into uh, my uh, my lifestyle, my my mother at that point was very. Uh, very much despaired over this. And so so when I did get saved, uh, I don't know if she fully understood it or not, but uh, uh, she was at least very happy that uh, I was going to church. And that was about the extent of her idea of what um, Christianity was. You go to church. And, and so, and she did watch me change. And so and so I did have a lot of favor from my mom, and, and, and she was uh, very happy for one. I was, I was breaking out of that lifestyle, and she, and she may not understood fully why, but, uh, uh, but she was very glad about that. So, uh, so I was going to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night. We had a church service on Wednesday. We had other activities, and... Uh, and uh, she was very much in favor. I, I had perhaps uh, some extended relatives that were uh, not so uh, excited about that. Uh, and um, but uh, there, uh, I would say that uh, though that's true, years and years later, uh, even they uh, came around to the the fact that hey, that uh, that God's real and God does great things and. Uh, in a person's life, and 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 you know, I can see where somebody, uh, when they get saved, they uh, somebody can say, "Well, you're going through a phase, or this, this won't last," uh, and they probably have a right to do that because uh, most of the things that we do do outside of God don't last; they are a phase. And so, a test a testimony of what God can do is something that is. Uh, 
uh, played out over the long haul. It's not, it's not a phase. It's not meant to be something that happens for six months and then it's over. And so, um, but I, just getting back to my mom, she was very, very relieved. I guess that's a good word that, that, um, that, uh, there was a real change in my life. And, and just as far as her story goes, uh, five years later, she gave her life to Jesus and she, um, she lived for God until she uh, passed away in uh, May night in 2015. And, and, uh, she's in heaven today. I, I firmly believe that. And, uh, so she was, um, she was a great blessing to me. So yeah, I'm very thankful for that. You know, that's really amazing too. I mean, when you consider like the age when a person decides to give their life to Christ, 14 years old, that's incredible that this man was even able to stay that long and not be pulled back into the system like, uh, like happens to a lot of kids. So tell us, like, what was the desire in your heart? Like, this is amazing to me that you want to go back to Queens. I was out in New York City and it was like, wow, such a shockeroo for me. But so you're wanting to go back. I mean, that's a heart of gold. You've definitely got one. <laughs> Tell us about like what your desires are to see there. And when you were there previous, what kind of miracles happened to these souls that you were preaching to and everything? Tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, it was in 2012. I, uh, I was I was evangelizing, uh, and I had a desire to pastor again, which uh, the difference is, if if you want to know the difference, evangelists are based in a church and they they are what they call itinerant preachers, and they'll go. Uh, out to uh, different uh, churches, and they'll do what they call revival series uh, of services, and it could be uh, five service, uh, five services in a row, and and um, and you have nights, and sometimes they're called meetings, and and so uh, preach a week in a church, and then a week after I'd go to another church. So I was doing that. I was doing a lot of traveling. And um, a lot of times you'll be home uh, where uh, we've lived, my wife and my son live. So, and so I was doing that, and, and so I did have a desire to go pastor again. And we were looking to go to a large city. I was going to go to Los Angeles, and, and my wife is born and raised in Los Angeles. So, it, uh, so that was uh, something we were looking at. But I did do... A, uh, a week of meetings. I was invited to do it in the Bronx, the Bronx, New York, and uh, and when I did that, I was there. And of course, during the day, you have some time uh, to uh, do some things. And so we went to Queens just for no other reason, just to, uh, just to see what Queens looked like. And uh, while I was there, I just. Uh, I don't know if I could put it into words. I just thought, man, this is a great place. This is a, there's a lot of different types of people. I liked the feel of it. Uh, I liked uh, I liked what I saw. It was obviously uh, New York's a much different type of city than Los Angeles. Uh, uh, it's more condensed. It has a different feel. And my wife was with me uh, that week, and and so. I uh, thought, why don't we just uh, look at this place? And I began to pray about it, and uh, it grew on me. And uh, it was it was um, it was something that uh, it was a desire that uh, seemed to grow. And so it seemed like Los Angeles faded and New York grew. And so um, I'm part of a church in uh, Tucson that um, that uh, invests in new churches, and so. And so my pastor, Pastor Harold Warner, um, um, liked the idea, and so, and so uh, him, along with the Tucson Church, uh, endorsed the idea, and and we went to Queens to start something, what they call a pioneer church, which basically means there's nothing there. You start from scratch, and uh, and uh, we were there for almost three years. And it was a tremendous time. There's, uh, I, I, I can honestly say I love the people 
that live in Queens. Uh, there's a wide variety of people that live there. Matter of fact, it's uh, Queens is um, part of Queens County. That's uh, and Queens County is the most diverse county in the United States. It's also the most diverse. 10 square miles in the entire world, 240 nationalities, 138 languages. And so uh, the, the folks that were coming in, the folks that we got to know and were able to, uh, had the privilege to know and have any kind of impact with were from wide variety of people, literally from all over the world. And, and a lot of them were born in New York, some were not. And, um, and it was just, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time, a wonderful, wonderful time. And, and, and so about three years later, uh, we went back to Tucson to evangelize, uh, and, and, uh, that, uh, door opened again. I felt good about it. So we did that. Uh, and I've been doing that for, uh, the last, uh, two and a half years, uh, but, Probably, I think it was in last summer, June, June, we had um, an opportunity to go back to New York. And I, my wife and I felt very, very good about it. And so we made the decision to go back. And, uh, and of course, this spring, April, we're going to be moving back there. And so, so yeah, it's, 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 um, it's a place that we've had, um, uh, Great memories, uh, great, uh, it's the third place that we've pastored, and I'd have to say it's also the place that, of all the three, that I really genuinely loved. And um, so and so when the opportunity to go back there happened, uh, I, you know, New York has its challenges. New York has its uh, things that you got to adjust to. And especially if you're someone that was born and raised in a place like Tucson, Arizona, which is anything but New York, <laughs> it's uh, you have to adjust. You have to adjust to it. And uh, we did that the first time. And and of course, there's you're always we're a work in progress. There's always things to learn. But uh, uh, but I have a heads up on what. Of what life and light is like in New York, and uh, I'm, along with my wife, very, very excited to go back and uh, and uh, see see exactly what can happen the second time around. And so, it's going to be a great time. That is absolutely amazing, Pastor Cooper. I I can't even believe this. That many different nationalities, that many different languages. Um, what do you feel in your heart? that God can accomplish through you in your work in that area of Queens? Well, I think the gospel can do in Queens what it can do in Mayberry. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that the gospel can reach anybody. And uh, it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, uh, what you think about yourself. The gospel can impact any life because the Bible says Jesus died once and for all. I mean, he paid the price but it also says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That is an open invitation no matter where you live and no matter who you are and no matter what your background is and no matter what, how uh, life has uh, dealt its cards to you. So um, this is a gospel of hope. So uh, the gospel works for anybody. And my confidence is not in any of my abilities, my personality, any giftings that I, I think I may or may not have, which uh, outside of God, I don't think any of us uh, have anything to offer anybody uh, spiritually. Uh, but um, it would be very presumptive on my part to think, okay, I'm going to go to New York uh, I'm going to, I've got a plan, I've got this, I've got uh, this approach, and I've got uh, this message, and people are just going to respond to that. The gospel's a miracle, and it always has been a miracle. And if you read the New Testament, uh, Jesus, uh, everywhere he went, he did have a message, but he did have miracles. And he also had men that were following him that were touched by his life and by the hope of the gospel, 
And his uh, promise to them is that uh, you can do what I can do, is that you, if you preach this message and you believe in me, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And uh, um, I am the vine, you are the branches. And, and uh, that's easy to figure out. Branches aren't going to do much without the vine. And so my hope and my confidence is that this gospel, whether you live in a tiny little town, whether you live in Cleveland, whether you live in Salt Lake City or Tucson, Arizona or Hyannis, Massachusetts, it doesn't matter. This gospel will work here, but it will also work in what some people consider a very tough area of, of New York City. And um, uh, Queens is a wonderful place, and um, uh, it's, it, it has a diverse uh, population. It has people represented from all over the world. And along with that, uh, you've also got a wide variety of people that, uh, while they may come from different parts of the world, maybe they have, may have uh, mothers or fathers that came from different parts of the world, uh, uh, all of them have something in common. One is that we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible says, and that's something we all have in common. Another thing we have in common is we're empty people. And uh, without God uh, and without a re relationship with Jesus, we are all uh, empty. There's something missing in our life, and, and, and people will spend their entire life trying to fill that emptiness. And so my confidence is that if I preach a message that's not my message, it's the message of the gospel, that this, that this message would work anywhere in this world. It would also work in New York. And, and without God, we're, if we're honest with ourselves, we're, we're brokenhearted, uh, we're empty. There's things, uh, what, we, uh, what people think about us could be entirely different than what we think about ourselves. And um, I have all confidence, not in any of my abilities or not uh i believe you got to have a heart uh my you know my wife and i were uh, you know i'm uh, german irish american uh, my wife's uh, mexican american and so uh, we we've got uh different things happening there and uh, we have a great marriage we love each other but uh uh but i i can say that we have a heart for people, we really do. You got to have a heart for people. You have to, uh, and what I mean by that, it's more than you just uh, feel uh, compassion or some kind of sympathy or empathy for someone. You have to believe that whatever people are dealing with in life, uh, uh, whatever uh, whatever sin has done to them, whatever uh, whatever uh, life has dealt them, there has to be an answer. And my my confidence is that if you're living, if you're breathing, and uh, you have the ability to hear uh, from God, then and God can impact your life. He can put together the pieces. And 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 uh, you know, my wife and I are going to go back. We're gonna we're gonna start a church from scratch in Astoria, Queens, uh, and. Um, my confidence and my hope and my uh, what what keeps me uh, believing that uh, that uh, who knows what God will do is that Jesus is alive and just like he touched my life I did share my testimony what he did in my life I believe he can do that in any life I believe he can do that in any young person I can believe that he can do that in any uh, adult in their 20s I also believe he can touch someone who's lived an entire life uh, of sin and is paying the price for it. You might be in your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, and you, and you look back in your life and say, uh, there's regrets, there's things that I wish I could have did different, uh, there's things that I wish uh, I had turned out better. Uh, there is hope in the gospel no matter where you find yourself. And, um, and uh, I, I'm... I have great, great confidence, not in myself and not uh, in the fact that we're a certain type of people or have a certain type of uh, approach. My confidence is that Jesus is alive. And uh, if you preach and you communicate the message of the gospel, this is not a dead message. This is not a message that somebody wrote. This is not merely a historical message. This is a message about a Savior who is indeed a Savior. 
Not only did he die for us, uh, and and uh, and then that's it. Uh, the Bible says he was buried, he rose again, and he's ascended into heaven, and he's alive today. He does miracles in people's lives. He can change any life. That means he can reach into any culture. He can reach into any uh, uh, any type of family. He can reach into any type of uh, situation. And he can do a miracle on a personal level. And uh, my strong, strong confidence in going back to New York is that if this gospel is preached, if it's communicated, uh, then uh, this, whatever happened in my life can happen to any life. I firmly believe that with all my heart. Uh, And um, I'm very excited about what, I don't know what God's going to do. I have no idea what God's going to do, but I know he's going to do it because he's risen from the dead and he's alive and he can do so much more than any of us uh, can even imagine. And I'm very, I'm very much excited about that. Well, Pastor Cooper, I really want to thank you for coming and sharing your testimony and sharing about the gospel and what it actually can do for folks. And I wanted to ask you if you would lead some of these precious folks out there that really might want to have Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. If you just take over and lead them in a little prayer, that would be awesome. Absolutely. I would um, lead anyone who is um, listening in the same prayer, basically, that I prayed 39 years ago. Uh, it's not so much the prayer but it's the honesty of heart uh, toward God. And uh, I, I did pray this, and it changed my life. And that prayer basically goes like this, if I could lead you in this, is the prayer of faith is, Lord Jesus, come inside my heart and forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died for me on the cross to pay the price for my sins. I ask right now that you would change my life, that you would come inside my heart, and from this point forward, I want to live for you with all my heart. I surrender my life to you. If you would change my life, if you would be real to me, and I'll follow you all the days of my life, and I thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, folks, if you said that prayer, then you're going to make one day heaven your home. And so I want to thank you, Pastor Cooper, again. It was awesome for you to just, you know, come share the gospel with these folks and the testimony of your life and the impact it had. And we wish you all the best. And who knows, maybe sometime we can go for an outreach over there in Queens, New York. Woo! All right, so thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you the next time. God bless.